In this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Power Apps and Power BI, how they fit together, why you would wanna use those two things together to enhance the experience for your users. Let's get into it. Power Apps is a great tool in the Power Platform. Uh, it's a low-code tool. It allows you to build apps quickly for your users in your organization. Uh, it's one of the, I would say, four pillars in the Power Platform. Think about Power Virtual Agents, Power Automate, Power Apps. Um, but what do you do when the data that you're dealing with becomes large or complex? Uh, so you're doing like big number crunching or you just got a lot of data that you want to show to your users. Power Apps itself has some kind of built-in limitations. There's only so much you can do with big data or complex data. And this is where the fourth pillar comes in. And so you can actually leverage Power BI within your Power Apps to take them to the next level. All right, so within Power Apps, when you're building things in a Canvas app, for example, you have some options for charts. They're actually fairly limited. So just a real quick look at the controls. The things that you get out of the box uh, that you might be able to use are a column line and pie chart. Those are fairly uh, simple options. We'll touch on this Power BI tile a little bit later. Um, but these are fairly limited in their nature and you're gonna connect them to data that's available in, inside of your app and things like that. On the model-driven side, you're gonna be in a scenario where you're gonna be building charts and then adding them to dashboards. And one of the real limitations here is simply that you have to use the old legacy uh, developer UI. Um, so this is an example of a dashboard and you can add a chart to it. Um, now, you have a wider variety of chart options here um, as you're creating your charts, but in this case, I'm gonna, I can select one of the charts available for my work orders, for example, and add it to this uh, dashboard. But again, it's not the best user experience from a developer standpoint. And it's also still limited to the data uh, as it comes from the entities, uh, the charts that you build or make available for those entities based on the views for those entities. So when it comes to like really large data sets or complex number crunching, right, this isn't really that. So the actual like better way to leverage data uh, and make it nice for your users uh, is to actually use that fourth pillar or that fourth leg of the Power Platform. Um, and that is to use something like the Power BI tile, for example. So if I added the Power BI tile here, it's gonna connect to my Power BI BI workspace or service, uh, and then allow me to configure it to point it at, at you know that whatever that Power BI report is. So on the model-driven app side, you're going to have the ability to create solution components within a solution that you can then add to your model-driven app. Uh, that takes the form of Power BI embedded uh, objects. So for example, if you add a new, I'm here. I'm in a solution. If I go new dashboard, you have an option here for Power BI embedded. Um, and this again is gonna uh, want to connect out to a Power BI report or dashboard. Um, and this may be connected to your environment and maybe outside of your environment. That's something that we'll touch on in a future video. Um, but these are the ways that you can actually bring Power BI objects into your Canvas app or your model driven app. If you're working in any kind of organization, data is probably at the center of almost everything that you do. Uh, it's becoming a bigger and more pervasive part of our lives. Everybody's connected to everything all the time. Data is everywhere. Uh, it helps us make decisions, uh, and there's now just more data than we've ever had. One of the things that Power Apps really can't do very well is uh, in bring in large amounts of data like to the end user, right? If you think about uh, what Power Apps essentially is, it's serving data up through a web browser. Uh, it's all in the cloud, so it's you know coming over an internet connection. Um, and so the ability to send large amounts of data, right, down to uh, somebody's mobile device, for example, to do number crunching just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. They could be sitting there waiting forever. Um, and then frankly, the the formulas and the functions and the methods that are, that that are available to you inside of, let's say, a Canvas app uh, when you're writing expressions don't lend themselves well to doing complex calculations. Um, so you can do some aggregation, but you'll find yourself building crazy like loops and things like that within your Canvas app, and that's certainly no fun. So this is where Power BI comes in. You can actually create rich and engaging uh, visuals for your users so they can interact with them, they can click on things and filter them, uh, answer their own questions with that. Um, it deals with large amounts of data. You can add layers of complex number crunching on top. Um, and so this tool, Power BI, is actually designed to do that work. And so the key here is that we can use something that we build in Power BI that provides that capability and actually bring it right into our Power App. So that should give you a pretty clear picture of you know, some of the capabilities that Power BI has in terms of providing 
compelling, interactive, engaging visuals for your users. Think about plugging those things into your actual Power Apps. Um, one of the ways that you could, could deliver uh, that type of visual or that type of analytics is you could build your Power BI report or dashboard, deploy it to a Power BI workspace, distribute a Power BI uh, desktop like workbook. But the reality is if the users who are using your Power Apps, the Canvas app or the model-driven app, are you know, taking action, making decisions um, that's gonna start a process or it's gonna send a PO to someone or it's gonna send email notifications and it's based on some data, why not bring that data right into the Power App so that they have all of it right at hand so that they can make that decision quickly instead of context switching you know, between browser tabs or uh, you know, different locations in your Microsoft 365 tenant to try to figure out what they're trying to do. So to the extent that you can bring those things together, uh, you can greatly enhance and improve the user experience. My biggest goal with this video was simply to illustrate or communicate one additional way that you can improve the user experience for any users of your Power Apps. Like anything in Microsoft 365, there are things about it that aren't fully baked, um, and so there are things that are changing every month that make it better. Um, and so if you found this helpful, one of the next steps might be figuring out how to put all of this together. And so something like licensing and subscriptions, which is a factor in this, uh, the how-to of actually embedding Power BI reports or dashboards in your apps, and then also application lifecycle management or ALM, which we've talked about in some other videos. All of those things are important to know and understand how they work uh, when it comes to taking Power BI components and putting them in your Power Apps. And so those are some things that we will actually wanna uh, touch on in some of our next blogs and videos, and so stay tuned for that. So in regards to that upcoming content, we're interested to hear you know, what are the areas you're working on? What are the things that you're stuck on maybe? So if something like Power Apps and Power BI ALM or the how-to um, or the licensing and subscription, if there's something that's more interesting uh, to you than others, feel free to post a comment uh, and we'll take that and run with it.